Waterloo Solitaire, the board game edition. Now, I've played the book game a number of times. This is the first time I'm going to play the board game edition, and I wanted to do a video to celebrate it. Now, this is not an easy game to, <laughs> to, to win, right? Um, the Allied forces here are tough. Uh, we're going to be playing the French. Um, and of course, in the book game, you just, uh, you know, r uh, mark things down with a pen here. We have a, um, we have cards. We also have the bot action. Um, and it does change, right? We have three different levels. We have challenging, we have tough and veteran or whatever. So we're going to be playing on the challenging here. Uh, and I'll keep that just off camera. And there's different levels with the cards, too. For instance, um, you know, deal cards from your hand based on your skill level. Seven cards for rookie, six for experienced, five cards for grognard. So let's do six cards, right? Let's do six cards. So let me just shuffle these again. All right, we're going to do six cards. And every time we use one of the cards, or two, right, if we do a combined attack, um, we draw back up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're never going to be using more than these, right? Uh, because there's a Napoleon action, which allows me to go into the discard pile to get a card I don't have in my hand, yet I still have units on the board. So here we have two core, we have artillery, we have a Napoleon card, which is, we have two Napoleon cards, which is too, too early to use this, right? We go into the discard pile, uh, for now. A cavalry charge and the one core. <clears throat> the problem with this game, as in with the book game, is Hougamont and Lie Saint. It's very hard to hit the right wing or the left wing with uh, allied control in the, these areas because we get uh, um, a dice roll modifier, okay, which is a disadvantage to us. For instance, the two core, if to attack Ugamon is a plus two, <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking for low rolls, a plus two, it's going to end up hurting us, okay. But that's it. So I most of the time, you know, if you're going to attack Hugamont, you have to have a combined attack. And we have five of those, right? Which means I can take the two core and maybe a cavalry charge and put them together, right? I'll have to discard both of them. But um, that way I have a combined arm tactics for a minus one. So in attacking Hugamont at plus two, it would be plus one. Still tough, but... Um, let's do a two core attack on the right wing. Uh, Hugamont is under ally control, so it's going to be a plus one, but heck, you know, we'll try it. Let's see what happens. Uh, so we're going to do that. The, uh, the sequence of play is that we choose a card. Okay. We choose our action. We choose what we're going to do. We roll a die to determine the bot action, okay, which is on this chart. We apply the bot action. We play the selected card, right, and uh, uh, the card action here and any bot action that it affects. We draw a card equal to the card we played, right? So we would discard this one, draw a new one, move the marker up there to turn uh, two, and uh, begin a new round. So I've already chose this to attack the right wing. We need to now roll the bot action. It's a six. Prussians arrive at two Prussian units by marking them on the map. Here they are. So two of them already arrived. And if the total Prussian units on the map equal or exceed the available French one core units... It doesn't. It does not exceed the French one, right? Our I core is pretty good. Um, in other, if if it exceeded, they would attack the French uh, core one, uh, one core at, at plus two DRM, right? 
So that's bad. Anyway, the battle has started. We need to now roll attacking the right wing with a plus one because Hugamont is in allied control. A three, and that's a four because it's a plus one. One French hit. One allied hit, so we each lose one. Well, at least I did some damage. I have to be very careful because here's how we lose. <laughs> this is important. The French player loses the game if at the end of any turn all units, including reinforcements, moved from the reserve... Okay, move to there from the reserve, right? Um, for the French one core or French two core are removed from the game. So if I lose the two core or the one core, at the end of the turn, it's, it's game over. So I need to have a card in my hand that can get these reserves into there or into there if it starts uh, depleting too much. And guess what? I don't... Uh, oh, I dropped a card here. Hold on a second. I don't have a reserve card here. So I have to be very careful. <clears throat> um, we also lose if at the end of any turn seven or more Prussian units are on the board. Right now we have two. Um... Eliminated Prussian units don't count for that. And uh, we lose by turn 18 if we haven't achieved victory. So how do we achieve victory? We have to destroy two of the following three allied formations. The right wing, the left wing, and the reserves. So two of these have to go. Okay? For us to win. And that's it. How do you like that? Turn two. We already played this. We discarded one, two, three, four, five. I did not draw back up. So we got the one core. I'm going to put these Napoleons back here. Let's do... Let's do a cavalry charge on the right wing. Let's do that. A cavalry charge on the right wing. Okay? The third cavalry is going to go in there and attack them. This is good. Now we have to roll to see what the... Uh, a two. Uh-oh, right wing. Attack the two core. If the allied right wing has more units than the two core, it does not have more units than the two core. The two core has four. They only have three. Uh, it says here, otherwise defend the right wing and form square plus two DRM if attacked by cavalry. And that sucks because that's what we're doing. We're attacking by cavalry. So it's a plus two. Oh, one plus two is a three, which means one French and one allied. So we lose... Lose a cavalry, but they lose the right wing. So they only have two left in there. Cool. That's not bad. So now we draw back up. One, two, three, four, five. Um, boy, I want to keep that up. One core. Let's do the one core... Let's attack La High Saint because we have the same situation here. Wait, did I turn? Oh, I keep forgetting to do that. I think this is turn three, right? Hope I didn't. Hope I didn't forget anything. Um, La High Saint is plus one DRM, but we're going to go ahead and attack that. Or should we go straight into the left wing? Now, let's try to get rid of La High Saint. Let's just try to get rid of that. 
with a plus one. All right, let's see what the ally of four. If French attack, charge the attacking formation. Charge at plus two DRM if attacking French or infantry, which they are. Wow, man, with a plus two. So their their cavalry is, is charging at us for going at Lahai Saint with a plus two. Ooh, five, and the max is six, so we lose two units. Wow, that was really bad. Now we're going to attack Lahai Saint with a plus one. Uh, four is one French and one allied. So we managed to do it, but we lost a unit doing it. Okay. So now there is no Lahai Saint there, which is good. So we discard that. We draw another one. Here's a two core. I'm going to do the one core again, but now, you know what? We really should. God, I don't have another cavalry. Fire artillery action. Okay, so we can't activate the... I was thinking of bringing the artillery back with the Napoleon, but it says cannot activate the, the artillery, artillery action. Oh, there it is, fire artillery. Let's use this, okay? This basically says we got to roll a die, and a 1, 2, and 3 is a hit. Let's do it on the right wing, okay? So let's see what the... Uh, wait, turn 4... Boy, I keep forgetting to do that. A six. Add two Prussian units. So two more arrive. And if the total Prussian units on the map equal or exceed the available French one core units, they do exceed. <laughs> Attack the French core at plus two DRM. I told you this game was tough. We're being attacked here at plus two. Three, four, five, so that is one French unit gone. Wow. Now we got to fire the artillery on the left wing, remember? And that's a one is a hit. <clears throat> we get rid of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Imperial Guard, we got to... Um, Gotta look at this. I don't have a reserve card, right? And this is too bad because I, I'd like to put reserves here. I'm really worried about this situation here. I don't have a cavalry charge. I'm gonna use the core two to attack the right wing with a plus one. I mean, I'm not gonna go here with a plus two. I mean, unless I use the Imperial Guard as a combined attack. How many of these Imperial Guard? Now I need to save this. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the Imperial Guard to attack the Prussians. I'm going to use the Imperial Guard to attack the Prussians here. I, I don't like that situation. Wait, did I, did I, is it turn five now? I always forget to do that. I don't know what turn it is. A four here. If French attack, charge the attacking formation. I guess the Imperial Guard is a, is a formation. A plus two. If attacking French or infantry, well, the Imperial Guard is not infantry. So I think they mean core one or two or the reserves, right? God, with the Imperial Guard? No. That's just... Let's see. Let me let me read that again. If the French attack, charge the attacking formation, charge at plus two if attacking French or infantry. Okay, so it's not going to be a plus two with the Imperial Guard, so they're going to they're going to charge the Imperial Guard. I'm just wondering 
how the heck they got back here. Otherwise, we roll and apply the results from the tactical events. The French are attacking, uh, but they're not. At they're attacking the Prussians. This is tricky, right? They're not attacking the Allies. Well, I guess the Prussians would be allies here. Anyway, it's not the Imperial Guard is not infantry. <clears throat> I don't think so. They're just going to attack the formation. Otherwise, reroll. I mean, let me see if I can get some clar some quick clarification here. Let's see. I doubt it. This this book is so simple. Yeah, whatever. I mean, whatever. Um, I mean, is the Imperial Guard considered infantry? No, it's not. So anyway, um, they're going to attack us. That's it. A six, we lose two units. Okay, the Imperial Guard loses two because we were attacked by their cavalry. And now we have to go on with our order, which is to attack the Prussians. So let's go. And we rolled a two. That is one hit. So one Prussian is gone. We get rid of this. Artillery. Okay, the two core is going to go for the right wing again. Okay. That would be turn six, uh, you know, uh, I think. <laughs> when I watch the video, uh, I'll find out how much, how off I was. Attack the uh, one core if the allied left wing has more units than the one core. Yes, they have more. So they're going to attack us there. They roll the two. One hit allied. They actually lost a unit for attacking us there because we're pissed um now we're gonna attack the right wing with a plus one because of hugamont right three which is a four uh, that's one allied one french so we got rid of these right <clears throat> now if we get rid of the reserves Left wing, right wing, or Prussians. I'm really afraid to lose the Imperial Guard here. Attack Allied Reserve if right wing is destroyed. So the two corps is going to attack the reserves because the right wing is destroyed. Let's see what the ally going to do. Let's see. Uh-oh, two more. Oh, no. And they're going to attack us. And if the total Prussian units on the map equal or exceed the available French one core units, attack at plus two DRM. Oh no, this could be it. Oh, a six, that's two units. So that is it. Because the um, game ending uh, conditions here, like I said earlier, The French player loses if any turn ends and seven or more Prussian units are on the board. Okay, there's not seven, but sorry, here it is. The French player can lose the game at the end of any turn when all units for the French one core or the French two core are removed from the game. And the, uh, the French one core, they were removed from the game by the arrival of the Prussians there who just kept coming in and hitting us we were gonna we were gonna attack the reserves now we did okay by getting rid of the right wing that wasn't easy uh i like this card play on the book game um 
you know, you have all these options there. All you got to do is tick. Here, we, we may not, like if I had the res if I had this card, the reserve, you know, when I had two units here, I would have played this card to bring the reserves in here. Reinforcements. So that this kind of stuff doesn't happen, right? In the book game, I would have been able to do that by just ticking that box. But here, if I have six cards in my hand, and, and that's not one of those cards, then I can't play it, right? That's just a condition of, of war. This is a, um, a very cool game. There's different levels of challenges here. On the other side, if you wanted to play the, uh, the Allies, you can, you know, you have the French bot actions. And that is, I think it's a you know, beautiful board. I love these, uh, these wooden block pieces. They're fantastic. This is a, a, this is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy Waterloo Solitaire Board Game Edition.